I really Perfect. like it. Perfect. Well, now, okay. now I also really like it. Thanks for turning us on to this. Yep. Now, if we could, mm. um, can we hear one of these one of these songs about whiskey? I mean, <laughs> that's, Bam. that's usually where. <laughs> Whoa, none yeah. goes to waste. Bam. This is usually Tom Waits territory where, where, uh, where I grew up listening to songs about whiskey, but I'm very excited. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, uh, yes. unless, unless you watch Chris's YouTube channel. For us, it's the first us, time yeah. ever. Episode Fridays. Um, here we go. A song about whiskey. So, uh, th this song is called The Whiskey Hunter. That's the kind of the moniker I go by. Um, when I first started the, the channel, I started with my friend. He's, he's kind of like my partner on this thing. And he said, you have to have a name for the channel. And mm -hmm. we came up with the whiskey hunter and on the spot i wrote this song and this is kind of like the the course of it is my kind of my theme song i play every 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 review but i actually have like a two minute ditty it's called the whiskey hunter it's just about my kind of like my goal as a whiskey hunter all right cool exciting cool cool man here we go Friends, I only have one job to do. That's to find the perfect whiskey. Make your dreams come true. Some of you may say that's not for me. Well, I'm here to prove you wrong. Come and follow me. Cause I'm the whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. Whiskey Hunter I ain't saying it's the answer or the cure But if you want to pick your spirits up This'll help for sure I got whiskey in my blood It's in my soul So come on everybody let the good times roll cause i'm the whiskey 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 the whiskey hunter oh and i'm the whiskey 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 the whiskey hunter whoa i think i gotta have another sip cheers that's awesome that cheers. was fantastic Cheers, Cheers, to, you, Cheers to you, ladies and gentlemen. This ah. has been Chris Gormley. Check out him with the, his new band, The Trues, and check out what's your channel, YouTube channel? The Whiskey Hunter. The Whiskey Hunter on, on YouTube. YouTube. We will put a link Fridays. to that. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Thanks for letting me feel sophisticated about drinking whiskey. And uh, congratulations on on your all your success. And Merry Christmas to you and your family, Chris. Thanks, guys. Merry Christmas. Cheers. I'll see you on the road soon. Take care. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Tom and Rick Show. It is always a pleasure when we get to speak with our mayor, and uh, we are lucky enough to have her here today with yes. us. Thank you very much for coming on today, Mayor Crombie. Um, how are things going? Thanks for having me on virtually. Let's keep it safe for everyone. It is yeah. very safe right now. How, how are things going? We A lot of has changed since the fall when we had you on. I, I think it was in September. Does that seem right? <laughs> Yes, um, it seems so. like a lifetime ago and our situation was so positive at the time and yeah. I almost thought we were going to avoid a second wave then. Right. But of course we haven't and now we are into our third week of lockdown and on the 20, uh, 21st, right. which is next Monday, we are going to hear whether or not we're going to stay in lockdown or not. And, you know, in thinking about it, I'm anticipating that we may not because York uh, and Windsor were just put into lockdown. Of course, it makes more sense to have the entire region uh, with, with similar rules. Um, um, and I would say that opening directly before the holidays uh, and then, of course, there's the Boxing Day sales and then New Year's Eve. I would expect that the province will make the decision that uh, we would stay in lockdown until the new year. And, of course, they're even thinking about uh, children coming and high schoolers coming back to school um, mid-January. That way, uh, I think we've everyone's recognized that the message is to stay home and only celebrate with your immediate family. But uh, we acknowledge that there may be a 
a little bit of bending of the rules over Christmas. And so mid mid January would certainly take us through that season where we see a little the bump in numbers. And we always see a bump in numbers um, after social gatherings. So whether they were Thanksgiving, even Halloween, Halloween actually had a bigger bump. Yeah. And then right, there was the rally. You know, and that's right. And there, there are Halloween parties and we can tell, we see the numbers, we see the COVID cases rise. There's a direct correlation right. uh, to within two weeks of those events. And then there was Diwali and now we're going to see Hanukkah and Christmas and uh, Christmas Eve. So we expect that uh, we will see a little increase mid January. So that's where we're at. I was very hopeful. Now I want to tell you that uh, our bylaw is out enforcing the rules. And there is 99.7% compliance, Wow, wow. which is fantastic, yes. which is absolutely fantastic. Now, the, the unfortunate thing that all it takes is uh, one event, one gathering to be a super spreader party. So that is always the risk. And we certainly have had a uh, bylaw go out. And let me tell you, um, this, this past week, uh, there have been 45 charges laid. Um, and proactive inspections. There have been almost 9,000 proactive inspections since lockdown. Oh. And that's where I get that 99.7% uh, right. in compliance following the guidelines. But I can just share with you, because this is public information, the kinds of things that they have uh, ticketed for, and that is some indoor training, uh, sports, and which was very unfortunate, but against the rules music, retail, indoor shopping, restaurant, indoor dining, definitely flaunting the rules. I think everybody right. knows there's no indoor dining right now. Uh, jewelry store, gas, uh, gas station was physically, not physically distancing, a place of religious worship, exceeding the indoor limits and dramatically exceeding because of course there are only 10 permitted, most have gone online. Uh, a nutrition supply store, a cafe with indoor dining, a private club, the, that they had hard games and alcohol. What? <laughs> mm -hmm. Flea market, non-essential. Gym, non-essential. Private residence gathering. And so, you know, this is a problem. There were three of these. One where they had 10 tickets, another one, eight tickets, another one, one ticket, and then another indoor dining. So that's the kind of thing we have seen this past week. And, you know, if, if I always tell neighbors, I tell people to be kind to each other, but if there are historic issues with neighbors, that's when we see an increase in calls. It used to be that the parking tickets, we, they call right. in for parking violations. Well, now they're calling in if they see excessive numbers of cars in your driveway or you know, in front of your home. So be kind to your neighbors and um, be careful. Be careful because we do get those calls. Now, if bylaw goes over and knocks on the door and people are apologetic and you know are celebrating Aunt Ethel's 100th birthday, they or their child's sixth birthday, they probably won't ticket. But if they do see a house, a house party, which is flaunting the rules and um, with, you know, and no one is contrite about it, uh, then they will ticket. As they should. Now, now I, I read uh, a couple of weeks ago, I've been seeing you on CP24 doing your updates. And a couple of weeks ago, you said that you had put forward a motion to, to limit big box stores to selling only essentials. Yeah. Uh, which, which, yeah. which sounded like a very uh, smart and, uh, you know, right moral thing to do. So I thought it leveled the playing field a little bit. Sure. Because it it's so unfair to me that, you know, our small businesses have to have to close, they have to shutter, and they're devastated. It's right, it's right during the holiday season where they make about 50% of their annual revenue. So it's quite devastating for them. And of course, many of them have been struggling for some time and they just, this might be, this may lead to some of their cl permanent closures. So we thought, what are, what's a good opportunity to right the playing field? So certainly we asked first for safe openings, uh, maybe capacity limits, in all the small businesses. And we were told that it's just sheer numbers. If you have you know, 90,000 businesses in Mississauga, if we're gonna let everybody open their doors even with limited capacity, think about the risk of exposure. With big boxes, we know we have a couple handfuls plus the grocery stores. You're talking about a hundred stores, not thousands and thousands. Right. So I thought, okay, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed uh, and I'm disappointed on behalf of our small retailers and our small businesses. So how do we fix that for him, for them? How do we try to level the playing field without giving these big box stores this huge uh, competitive advantage that they yeah, have sure. had? They get a monopoly so all of a sudden. That, 
if, if we're asking people to stay home, so opening business sends the wrong message, go, but go out, but you know, be careful and obey capacity limits. It does send a contrary message. They also argued that. But if businesses are only permitted uh, to sell essentials, then why should the big boxes be permitted to sell anything but the essentials? So why should they be able to sell electronics and home decor and sporting equipment, etc., when you should be able to purchase that online or do the pickup curbside delivery? You shouldn't be able to go in there and purchase them when nobody else can sell them. It's blatantly unfair. And right. let's be honest, they're making record profits and those yep. profits aren't being reinvested in our communities. They're being sent to their multinational headquarters, which is usually south of the border so i thought what what better way to say look you should be able to sell only what everybody else can what is essential now unfortunately my council members didn't go for they are gotten lobbied overnight frank practically uh people they they argue people have accessibility issues not everybody has a credit card not everybody has the ability to you know shop online so what about those people that we shouldn't prevent the um the big boxes from uh, selling whereas just because nobody else can so you know they made a powerful argument i didn't agree with it but i didn't have the votes to carry it and so instead the motion changed to ask the province to be more supportive of our small businesses and um uh, the gtha mayors meet every monday at lunchtime and we have a conference call and we have we will we have put forward a different regulatory model uh in the new year so if lockdown continues to early January to mid January, you will hear our messaging change saying, okay, lockdown, we've now been locked down for over a month, uh, you know, and, and let's be honest, our numbers have stabilized, but they haven't started to decline. And I'll go through those in a moment, but let's hope to God after, after by January, they do start to and well, the conclusion of that is we will be asking for safe reopening with capacity limits starting in January. And that messaging will come from the mayors and it will go to the province. Um, so that will change. We're saying, OK, we, we hear you. You want full lockdown now. But, you know, as of January, uh, we're, we want a different model. Well, it, it, it seems to me uh, and we've talked about this quite a bit. That's, uh, you know, the most powerful lobby voice that should be listened to is the small business yeah and um and surely if somebody doesn't have a, a credit card um arrangements can be made i think that those arrangements for for the subgroup of people that don't have a credit card is a far less onerous burden than all of small business losing um feeling like they're being cheated yeah. and feeling mm -hmm. like there's a monopoly that's been dropped on them. So congratulations to you for raising well, this motion. And it's, it's unfortunate it didn't pass. My counselors felt that it could penalize uh, low income people and people with accessibility issues. And that was very important to them. So, you know, I have to respect that. I think that Councillor Dasko uh, was very supportive, uh, you know, and I know he's local boy down here in Port Credit mm -hmm. where we all are, uh, but we, we couldn't carry the vote. So we had to go with something that was acceptable to everyone. And, and frankly, Mayor Brown, you know, he and I were carrying that charge. Uh, but it, anyways, you, you know where we're at. So okay. Well, um, but, but all the mayors will will begin to lobby for the loosening um, and you know the application of capacity limits rather than full closures uh, in January. Right. Um, now, now moving on, we're just a couple of weeks uh, uh, from Christmas, uh, and and putting aside your or taking off your mayoral hat for a minute. Uh, how do you plan? Nine days. Nine I know days. because today is my daughter's birthday. Oh, happy she's birthday. Today. Happy birthday, Natasha. I've seen, uh, that, on, seen that on Facebook. And, and she has one of those, uh, you know, one of those people who have to, they usually get the combined uh, birthday Christmas right. gift. So I know acutely well, it's nine days away. <laughs> and, uh, and and how, how are you guys going to do Christmas this year? Uh, Christmas will be at home <laughs> with just immediate family, as is the rules. I'm not, I can't be the one to bend those rules for sure. Uh, so, and she, she's already received her uh, Christmas, or sorry, her birthday gift. And then she, my mother and I have jointly purchased uh, her Christmas gift. So, and I've already uh, packaged up my boys gifts too. And they'll have a combination of gift cards from local right. businesses. Excellent. <laughs> and, and a bit of cash, which they can always use, right? Right. Well, uh, uh, thank you very much for coming on the show today. I know you have a super busy schedule, and we had to we had to uh, 
get squeezed in and we were happy to oh, we're happy to be with you today. I really today. appreciate it. Thanks Just so if much, I Brian. could, you know, while wishing everyone a very happy holiday season and a very Merry Christmas, because of course I'm Catholic, so I celebrate Christmas. I uh, just want to say that, you know, we're kind of at a turning point now. Once again, our numbers aren't stable yet. So please do what you can to follow the rules. I know it's tough. It's the highest a religious holiday, highest holiday season of the year. But, you know, we know <laughs> when people are uh, become a little lax with the rules, because we see it in the outcome. The numbers show a week and a half, two weeks later that the surge of cases increased. So please, during this holiday season, follow the rules as best you can. And, and you know, if you're going to digress, be safe. Please be safe. Please make sure you maintain that physical distance. And, uh, you know, th this isn't ideal, these Zoom calls, but they're another way to celebrate. And we wish everyone would do so. We are now at 133 cases per 100,000. Um, let's see the R factors with that. We are at a 7% positivity rate. And I can put that in perspective for you. Uh, certainly Brampton. So if we have 133 cases per 100,000, Brampton is 304. Peel, so it's an average, is 203, our positivity rate, 7%. Brampton's is 13%. Wow. However, we know there are pockets in Brampton that are 19, 20% positivity rate. So Peel is a 10% positivity rate. Actually, even Caledon is higher than Mississauga, believe it or not. So people are being vigilant. It's just those few that certainly flaunt the rules as those private house parties I described to you at the beginning of our session. That could be one super spreader party one right. super spreader party and it could account for hundreds and hundreds of cases and we just don't want to see that we want to get back into at least red zone or orange zone the red zone starts at 40 cases per hundred thousand so we have a long way to go wow. a really long way to go and you know we were there last time we spoke i think we were just in double digits and i was right. feeling optimistic you know and i used to stress when we were in double digits and now i'd like to get our numbers under 100 cases per 100,000 and these are daily cases right so it's serious it's serious and we're asking everybody to do anything they can well so, thank you thank you very holiday. much happy, happy holidays. holidays merry christmas i will miss wild game night oh you know, everybody, everybody will. First everybody time, is. first time in ten years, and we will enjoy it much more next year when we do have it. Yes, we will. Thank you very much for speaking Thank with you. us today. Merry Christmas, Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Thank you. you. And we will be right back. I'm Derek Lothrop, and you're watching the Tom and Rick Show. Merry Christmas, everybody. Okay, here we are, day thirteen, counting it down for Christmas. Spreading the joy around the internet here. I thought I'd play a jolly song today. Very happy, holly jolly song. Hope you all dig it, everybody. Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. Now, I don't know if there'll be snow that will have a cup of cheer. Have a holly jolly Christmas when you're walking down the street. Yes, say hello to friends you know and everyone you meet. Oh, oh, mistletoe is all you can see. Somebody waits for you, kiss her once for me. Have a holly jolly Christmas, and in case you didn't hear. Oh, by God, I have a holly jolly Christmas this year. Jolly, be nice to each other. Peace. The work you've done since the 70s, since you were 20, 20 years old, 
you have a very broad understanding of popular music, rock and roll music, and you're able to see it from a, 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 an insider slash outsider's perspective. People are talking well, a lot now about the effect of Spotify and the music business, the effect, the you know, free music, what's, what's virtually free music, um, how everything is about the artist's Instagram page, and you know, how many followers do they have. How do you see this new sort of model of the music business affecting the art that's being created? Well, that is a long, long, long conversation. <laughs> but there's a couple of things that's, that streaming has done. It's, it's created a completely new paradigm. People don't own any music anymore. You don't own music when you subscribe to Spotify. You have access to an unbelievable amount of music but ownership becomes unimportant. Hmm. You simply are effectively have access as long as you keep paying your subscription. You're renting that it. That devalues music. Right. Mm -hmm. That forgetting forget about you know the small royalty rates that the streaming services provide. Although they have been steadily increasing, and certainly the record industry has recovered from their uh, moaning that they're about to go out of business. You know, ten years ago, the record company is actually doing very well. Artists still are not doing nearly as well as they should be doing from streaming, not even close. Right. But it's changed consumer behavior. And the creation of playlists is an interesting phenomenon. People made their own mixtapes as long as cassettes existed. Sure. Before cassettes, very few people could do that. But, you know, the idea of mixtapes, creating your own structured playlist is not new. But with streaming, um, of course, you can... Um, create it, and people do create it for a function. Chill out music, right? Exercise music, waking up in the morning music, ambient music, uh, energized music. You get your hype before you're going out. You know when you're a right. teen preying before a party and so on. If you think about this, we've changed the idea of with at least those kinds of practices. We've change the idea of people buying an artist or a song that they love let alone an album that they love that's a whole other thing you know moving towards the track instead of full albums mm -hmm. but you now are changing the moment of consumption from the consumption of a piece of expressive culture that's important to them to a piece of craft that will work to create moods and accompany activities right exercise waking up getting hyped up to go out. Now, this is not monolithic. Obviously, lots of people still buy, whether it's uh, downloading CDs, vinyl, or they stream music by artists they care about deeply right. and songs that they care about deeply that have a lot to do with shaping their identity and their lives. That has not gone away, but there's a substantial amount of music consumption that is now part of this playlist practice and that has nothing to do with the artist or the song. Right. Well, and that allows Spotify mm -hmm. to use AI, which they're working with already, artificial intelligence, to create songs that fit moods, that create emotions, that fit activities. Now you can cut the artist out. You can cut the record companies out. And maybe the AI machine can't completely give you the finished product. But the AI machine, and they use these, AI is being used all over the place. Warner Brothers is using artificial intelligence actually in their A&R departments now before they sign bands. Wow. They're able to evaluate songs and rate them in all sorts of different categories vis-a-vis -vis what's currently selling well and say, okay, the song has a score of 81%. It's not 90%. We're not going to put it out. Here's where it's deficient. It needs a better hook in the first 30 seconds. It needs this, it needs that. So anyway, getting back to the streaming Spotify thing, Spotify can hire musicians who now will work as craftspeople, waged people, not on royalties, and whatever their artistic interest or muse, or muse might have to be is irrelevant. It's simply about creating music to meet a consumption moment the music consumption isn't the practice. The music consumption is part of a larger practice. Right. And that's, that's a huge change. And there's, that's, there's many, 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 but that's one of the ones that I find 
maybe most interesting, also most frightening. Well, it's certainly frightening for us because, you know, Rick and I are of an age where people still bought albums and sure, we could make too. a living playing live. We could make a living um, selling music. And of course, now with the pandemic, the live is gone. Uh, Spotify has meant it's virtually impossible to make a living on that. So these things you're talking about, um, frankly, scare me. Um, that you're writing music for video games. I mean, that's your future. That's it's, uh, uh, it's video games is a huge, it's a huge future. Market. Uh, for mean, not just yeah. writing, but performance. Yes. I don't know if you know about Travis Scott. Do you know who Travis sure, Scott yeah. is? Yeah. Yeah. Travis Scott's huge. He did a 10 minute and eight second or something performance via an avatar in the game Fortnite. I don't know if you yeah. know what the yeah. game sure. Fortnite. Yep. Yep. This generated millions and millions of dollars. This is the big money these days. Well, this is scores. huge uh, money. Uh, I heard that, that video games is now a, a bigger revenue source than all movies and all music combined. Oh, totally. But for musicians like a Travis Scott has already got a big name and fits a certain demographic in terms of who might be interested in his music. It's provided an alternative source instead of touring. Mm -hmm. He probably right. made thirty-five million that one night between merch sales, both game merch that mm -hmm. actually doesn't exist except in the game, right? Real merch that people could order online that commemorated the Fortnite performance, streaming royalties for that being up on YouTube and in other spaces afterwards, plus the twenty or so million he got up front. Wow. Well, you got you got. Why go out there and do the road? Mm -hmm. Now, of course. In some ways, that helps younger musicians or musicians at a lower level, because when people like Travis Scott or the Rolling Stones come into a market, they take a massive amount of money out of a market, which really hurts mid-level and lower-level musicians. Right. So if a Travis Scott isn't touring, maybe that actually helps mid-level, lower-level musicians in terms right. of just how much money is circulating in a market for actual live music. This whole thing is in such an unbelievable state of flux. Um, yeah, I just taught a three-hour class on this a couple of weeks ago, the changing role of political economy vis-a-vis -vis new technologies wow. in the music industry. Well, Rob, we, we're, we're running out of time here. We just have two minutes left till we have our next guest. Um, first of all, I'd like you to come back on. Will you come back on the show? Because, Got 20 uh, million? That's uh, what Travis gets. <laughs> Um, I'm joking. Well, I'd be happy to come back on because I would love to hear. I would love to hear. Maybe when your new book is out, will you come on and talk to us about your new book? And if we could sure. squeeze in a story about the Rolling Stones, I would love that too. Um, I got tons of Rolling Stones oh, stories. Oh, killing me. Um, <laughs> what, I've been with them two. at seven club shows, including the Elmo Combo. Oh, I've been oh. in Australia with them. Wow. Um, well, we'll have a, to get to that in part two it, at another show. It, is a, it sure. is a wealth of knowledge you bring. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and your knowledge with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Professor Rob Bowman. Um, I don't even like to say professor. It seems like rock and roll. Or uh, that's far too thing. pretentious. This guy's I don't a, my students this guy's a dude. He's a, he's, he's a solid dude. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's put it on a business card. Great to have you. And ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is always a treat when we have our Ward 1 City Councilor Stephen Dasko in. He is the person in the trenches working for us, working for small business, trying to make the community work in this pandemic. Stephen, thank you very much for making the time to see us today. Uh, always good to have you for an update. And we're now third week into the new lockdown. Uh, what's happening? How's, how's, how's managing this crisis for Ward 1 been? Well, Tom, Rick, again, the show's fantastic. It's a great way to get messages out on the local level. You've taken what could be broadcast anywhere, uh, and, and you've, you've done us all a treat by keeping it local and, uh, and making it very relevant for everybody. So well, thank I want you. to say well, thank, thank you. you. Um, during the pandemic, it's, it's been a, a challenge for sure, uh, and it continues to be. The, uh, the unfortunate thing is, um, you know, I guess we're looking for, for everybody to be treated fairly and equally, um, not, taking, uh, not taking a big boot to, uh, to what would be uh, our local businesses, uh, you know, to Main Street and treating everybody the same. So uh, not questioning the science by any stretch of the imagination. Wear a mask, absolutely. I say don't leave home without it by any stretch, but uh, just looking at the method of which it's being employed. And uh, I think if, if you're looking to do it, uh, be fair uh, with everybody and uh, be harsh if people are breaking the rules. But uh, shuttering uh, things like our, our Main Street down uh, the way it has been, it's, uh, I just don't think it's, it's effective. And I don't think that the, uh, that the firepower is directed in the right particular spot. Right. And, and this is, look, none of us are medical professionals, but we listen to the advice. And the advice is wear a mask all the time when you're out. Yeah and social distance and wash your hand and do all of that stuff. I think where people get um, pissed off, when people get anxiety, is when they see it's not a fair implementation and it's not a level playing field. So, yeah. you know, Rick was saying he was in a, a big box store, he had to pick something up. Mm -hmm. There's 200 people in the store. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's lineups around the corner. Yeah. And people are not going into Walmart to buy a head of lettuce. They're no. going into Walmart and they're buying, they're buying TVs and jeans or, or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I understand that you supported a motion that said, look, the big box stores, okay, we get it. People need their essentials. Yeah. I, I cannot for the life of me see how someone who's supposed to be representing all of the people of Mississauga could say, yeah, fine. You can go and buy whatever you want. Because you need that curtain rod. You know, yeah, or that pillow. Right. Everyone, yeah, you know. everyone else. I, I think it's a far bigger sacrifice for a small business to have to go close their door and do curbside than it is for Walmart to say, look, if you take anything that's not food or bandages, it's not going to scan. So don't yeah. even bother. And if you're not exactly. looking to do that, and if, and if they're saying, you know what, you can't do that, you can't do that for A, B, C, and D, then I want to know why you can do that to our small mom and pop shops. Yeah. What's fair is fair. That's fair. And, 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 and we need and, an, an equal playing field. So you were a champion of this. Uh, we had the mayor on earlier. She was a champion of this. Um, and, and uh, you know, I don't say that I understand the issue in its entirety. But there are obviously people who voted against this. And the mayor was saying, well, that some people might not have a credit card, so they can't shop online. Or it might be um, a disadvantage to, uh, to people that don't have the income to be able to shop yeah. online. And you certainly don't want to discriminate against those people. But somehow, it just doesn't ring true to me that that is the reason you can say to Walmart and you can say to these big box stores, yeah, you guys can sell whatever you want. Mm -hmm. it, it just. Uh the math just doesn't add up, you know, it, it really doesn't. And so if that is going to be the case, then again, I, I just go right back to uh, we've got some incredible stores, whether it's uh, you've, you've got the shirt, you've got the, the sure. right, right on right on the top of your head cabin. Yep. Perfect point of view, um, you know, going into there. Uh, why can you not walk in there in a socially responsible way? Uh, I, I was in in, uh, in the summertime when things were open, and as I went in for a haircut, I had my temperature checked as I walked through the door. They write, wrote down my name, my phone number. You don't do that at uh, Walmart. Had you write down? Absolutely. You so, don't get that right. at the What's big happening? box stores. You know? yeah. And this is, you're doing this stuff because your life and everybody's life depends on it, and their economic life depends on now, it too. Now, what, so. is, what is the pushback that we have to say, because obviously many people voted against this leveling of the playing field. Um, 
what, how can we hold people accountable? How, how can we say to a, a, a city, do, do you write them a letter? Do you send them an email? How can we say, look, you're, you're missing the point here. It's been done in other jurisdictions yeah. where they have told the big box stores you can only send, sell essentials. I have not heard any uproar that that has you know, destroyed people's lives. So how can we hold people who voted against this fairness, uh, you know, this uh, fairness bylaw, this motion, how do we hold them accountable? How do we make change? Well, essentially, what that would have done, really, is it would have given that that motion that uh, that the mayor is speaking of and that, that I'm speaking of, uh, and, and as well, just leveling of the playing field and, and, quite frankly, you know, direct your firepower in the right place at the end of it all. Uh, that comes down to Dr. Lowe, our chief medical officer, is the one that would pen the letter. Uh, and that, and th this is what this motion is for. It's just to be able to pen a letter that would go to the Premier and the Minister of Health to, uh, to make those, uh, to, to have that as a thought. So it would, right. even if uh, all of council agreed to it and, and Dr. Lowe and still, agreed to it. And still, it was just to, to write a letter and still it didn't get support. Letter. Well, that yeah. seems, you yeah. know. Yeah. That, so, that just seems offside and uh, it doesn't pass the, the sniff test in some way. It, you know, and I'm totally just talking on my ass yeah. here because I don't know for a fact. It seems weird. But that's, but that's part of the frustration. And, uh, and so when you, you, know, you, you hear uh, uh, you know, Madam Mayor, myself and others talking about it, it's, uh, it's something that comes up all the time. And I keep pounding the drum on and I'll call people out on it because mm -hmm. it's not fair. It well, it's not fair. Good for you for doing that. Now, we, we, we talk about the pandemic all the time because we're in it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, there's things other than the pandemic going on in Ward 1. Tell us uh, what's happening and uh, new things for the new year. Absolutely. Well, one thing that we have worked on as a city and that uh, I'm happy to have been actively working on it and promoting it as I've been on the show before talking about uh, uh, doing some exemptions for noise bylaw and things like that to get our, uh, our live music scene back on track uh, and, and get it, getting it moving forward. Also, uh, what we've done at the city, we've been working on the, uh, the patio program uh, was supposed to go until uh, effectively November uh, 15th. I got it pushed to. Well, now we've got it until December 31st of 2021. Great. So the next year, so we'll get the, the fees waived on that, the ability to open up patios to do those kinds of things. It opens everything up well, a lot Well, I love easier. you doing this because yes. the, the problem that some of the bar owners are having and the entertainment venues are having is things get dropped on them. Uh, yeah. New bylaws get dropped on them. You can do this, now you can't do this. So that you're doing this a year out, they, so can, they can plan, plan now, they can organize, yeah. they can get heaters, they can yeah. do outdoor stages, and they can uh, you know, not feel like, yeah. I just spent five grand on this and this isn't yeah, good enough doesn't, anymore. Yeah. So yeah. thanks for doing Getting that. Getting those nasty surprises, I mean, it's, it's unfair and it's unwarranted at the best of times, let alone when there's so many people that are suffering and on the ropes. Right. So trying to get that cleared up. And then also uh, what's getting worked on, is to be able to do uh, some pop-up things, whether it's a, uh, a pop-up market or something like that that's outdoors, that's, you know, of course, uh, COVID compliant, um, just to get all of, uh, all, all of the red tape and, and, and things that might bog us down, uh, right. get that out of the way early so that can be done. And then as well, uh, other things, whether it's, uh, say, a, a drive-in a, a drive bingo or something like that to, right. uh, to get people doing things that, uh, that that is good for, for, for them mentally and sure. as well uh, to get out, but at the same time being safe. And, and um, you were mentioning earlier uh, off camera when, uh, when we first started chatting today that there's also a push to have more outdoor activities. Absolutely. And so I went to this city a, a little while ago and because I've heard this from, from some people uh, over since I, since I came in uh, two years ago saying, you know, we'd love to do some extra things. And this was pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, why can't we do more things, you know, in the wintertime? And I know that the Port Credit BIA, for example, was looking at doing a, a winter market and some other things. The, the Creative Hub 1352 at the Small Arms Building, we're looking to do some things there. And so, then okay, well, you know what? I had worked on... Uh, classic car Thursdays at the latter part of which was the a summer, great success which was was great and again keeping people safe yep. as, as they did yep. this as well which is always the priority yeah uh, uh, safety is the most important for sure and then uh, and so we got into talking about uh, the uh, the Lakeview golf course 
fantastic piece of property sure and uh, it's uh, it gets padlocked up you know to preserve the course uh, yes. and, and, and safety of people so what they're looking to do and this is starting it's January 7th <laughs> it's, it's coming on right. the greens okay, okay absolutely we'll stay off the greens Rick but uh, they've actually charted out a course it's gonna be a, an ungroomed walk that you could do or snowshoe uh, around uh, the Lakeview Golf oh, Course. Lakeview. They'll have some staff there and washrooms will be open for, oh, great. Uh, for people to make use of. So that's starting January 7th from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. daily. Well, it's going to be a long, a long, cold winter. And um, I think, you know, for people's mental health and their physical health, being able to go to a, a local golf course and do a hike or do a snowshoe is, um, is something there really should be more of. So thanks for doing that. There's a couple of good hills there too. So like um, on the back nine there, there's a couple of holes you can take the kids and put a toboggan down one of the holes. Hopefully they'll let you do that. That'd be fun. Right on. Absolutely. Well, Councillor Dasko, um, it's such a pleasure to have you on. Is there is there any holiday message you want to leave with um, the people of Park Credit? Absolutely. First of all, I've got to say again, a congratulations to you, Tom. Uh, we did our second annual lifetime, or sorry, our, our second annual Ward One Excellence Awards. Uh, that goes out to the community, and people send in of who they think in each respective category should be nominated, and then we go to uh, an independent panel and they pick uh, uh, the winner. So our uh, our lifetime achievement uh, is Tom Barlow this year. It was quite an honor. Thank you very much for that. So, uh, and and well deserved. Thank you. You know, so I just wanted to make mention of that, that Tom, what you do in the community doesn't go unnoticed. Rick, you guys are doing a great service uh, with the show again. I can't say enough about it. And, um, and for everybody at home, I just wanted to wish everybody a very happy holiday, a Merry Christmas. It's not our normal uh, holiday by any stretch of the imagination. It's not what we would want for anybody, for any family, but we've just got to be vigilant. We've got to do what we've got to do. Let the vaccines uh, get out into uh, in, into uh, greater distribution, mm -hmm. so that we all come out on the other side, and that we Sooner can be better. stronger and better, and, uh, and and we can get back to, to normal life, which uh, I think all of us are just so desperately craving right now. Well, uh, it's a beautiful way to end the segment, ladies and gentlemen. This has been and is Stephen Dask Dasko. Thanks very much for making the time. Love your hat, Love and uh, we will be right back. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Cooking with Carson. Uh, sorry, some of you are probably disappointed I didn't get my introduction that you're still using. There it is. Stop it in the rear of... Some of those messed up turkeys are afraid of the worky. Some of those messed up turkeys I'm afraid of the working. Come on! Stop it in the rear row. Stop it in the rear row. Now Carson will show ya. 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 There it is. <laughs> hey guys, today we're making Christmas turkey stuffing. It doesn't have to be uh, fancy when you're making your stuffing, but don't buy that stuff out of the box. It's just not the same as making it yourself, and I'm going to show you how simple it is. Already I've been sweating down some celery and onions, and I just cut them like a fine, not a fine cube, but just kind of a, a rough chop. And this is nicely sauteed browning. You want it brown, not black. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a bunch of butter just to kind of melt the butter. The reason I didn't put all this butter at first is because I would be boiling the onions and the celery. I wouldn't really be getting them caramelized, which means more, getting more flavor into them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to melt about four pats of butter. There's going to be a lot of butter, a lot of fat into this stuffing. And it's going to be fantastic because of those flavors. But what we do is when we um, make stuffing, it is generally stuffed inside. Uh, the cavity of um, usually poultry. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to have non-stuffed stuffing, okay? I'm just going to stuff it in the oven. That's where I'm going to put it. Because um, I find that when we have uh, turkey dinner, there's often not enough left over. So I like to make a little more on the side. And then I've just gone to not even putting it in the bird. So this is melting down nicely. And now what I'm going to add is 
some of my uh, chicken stock. If you have turkey stock, use that. And I'm going to put most of it in there, not all of it. And that's already hot, so it's melting down nicely. Now, when you're making stuffing, you can put all sorts of things in. And what I did was I took things that I had around the house. Um, but uh, when you're stuffing, you're putting uh, things into your stuffing. You can do nuts like chestnuts or even walnuts or pecans. I've seen people use uh, meats like uh, cured sausage, um, uh, dried fruit. Today, I'm going to use some uh, the dried cranberries and some pumpkin seeds. OK? So this is really nicely melted, all coming together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a beaten egg in here. I want to mix that into my bread mixture first. This bowl is filled with bread that's been cubed. Just little bite-sized cubes. And I'm going to stir that all in. The reason I want to put the egg in first is because if I put the um, egg into the hot liquid, it would start to cook it like scrambled eggs. And here I'm going to pour all this in here. My hot plate's beeping at me. We don't need that anymore. Just going to stir this all together until the bread gets all incorporated. This is beautiful bread from La Villa Bakery. And just a shout out, today when I'm filming this, it's our friend Johnny Botso's birthday from La Villa. So happy birthday, Johnny. And I'm going to put the rest of the stock in here. I just need a little bit more liquid. That's why I reserve that, just to be absorbed. I got my pumpkin seeds, scatter those in, my dried cranberries, and in this can I got one of the most popular Christmas flavors and aromas, and this is fine dried sage. I want to get it really incorporated in there. Just That's one thing. You can put anything in your stuffing, but I think that's one thing that we can't do without. And last but not least, one thing we can't do without, but I often forget is our salt and pepper. Okay, so some, some pepper, some sea salt. And even when this is done, we can adjust it for flavoring. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, uh, I have a cake pan here. This is like greased with butter. I'm going to push all of this stuffing. Some areas in the UK, they'll call this dressing. And it's referred to stuffing when it's not actually stuffed into the bird. OK, so you might have heard that growing up. Even some of the bread that doesn't have a lot of moisture on it is going to get that absorbed into it. Because I'm going to put on top of it a piece of foil, OK? Chopping in all that moisture and letting those flavors come together. And this is going to be um, in the oven for about 20 minutes. So I'm going to put this in here. And I'm going to take one out that I've already made. And this is what I love about this countertop. You can put a hot item right there. You can see the steam coming out. And here we have some beautiful stuffing. It looks like bread pudding. And what you can do when you're serving this, if you're having a sit-down meal that's served, you can cut out one of these and serve it just like this on the plate like and put the turkey there just use that when you're serving it but what I like to do is just to bring these flavors together and stir it around the pan before I find my serving bowl to put that inside okay so here we have some beautiful stuffing bread pudding dressing call it what you like but it's a delicious side dish that you're going to want to have for your Christmas dinner. Merry Christmas, guys. Happy holidays, Tom and Rick. Ace Piva with Over the Bridge here. I'm dropping by to thank you for doing all that you do. You have created such a wonderful online community with your show. You've given musicians a platform to come and shine when venues are closed and it's a tough time out there this year. So thank you for doing all that you do. For those that don't know, Over the Bridge is a Canadian nonprofit organization that empowers music and showmakers to reclaim their lives from mental illness and addiction. Over the Bridge also hosts two Zoom peer support groups every week. That's right. 
every Tuesday and Friday between 2 and 3 p.m. We are saving space for you. Our group members are full of musicians, agents, managers, roadies, crews, bus drivers, all kinds of music industry members. So, although Christmas is a very joyous time for many people across the world, it can also be a very tough time. So, on Friday, December 25th, between 2 and 3 p.m., we are holding space for you in our Zoom group. You can find our links on our website and on our Facebook page. Our website is www.overthebridge.org and our Facebook page is OTB Nonprofit. You can find both links there. And once again, every Tuesday and Friday between 2 and 3 p.m., we are holding space for you. It is okay not to be okay. So once again, Rick, Tom, thank you very much for everything you do. Have a very happy holidays and we will see you soon.